Hi, hi, friends. Okay, I plugged my webcam back in. Oh, well, it says. No, maybe not. Why is it just a picture? It's not even a video. Let me. There we go. Yay, now I'm moving. And then we. Oh, that's why. Okay. Hide that one. Sorry, I thought I had this fixed, and then now it's not. Huh. It's still showing. Let me just remove my camera. We'll go to hello, and then let's put this one back. Let's see if that'll work. No? It's plugged in. Sorry guys, I don't usually have this problem. <laughs> usually it's ready to go. Okay, we're gonna just remove and we'll make a new one. There's the hand. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. Just get this back to the right size. Okay. All right. Hello. Hello. Looking good now. I think. I think that's fixed. Hi. Hi. We're here. We're we're working. Things are working. I have a huge mess over here because I've been working on all kinds of things. We're gonna be Omnicon prepping today. So I have all these hoops that I have to figure out what I'm gonna work on. But I um, was working on a couple different things, so I'll show them off. But first I wanna show off my Critical Role shirt that Joey got me. It's Fern with Mr. on it. So cute. Um, so I'm wearing it today. It's got the critical role little symbol in the back. And then let me also message, you know, Bethany and Tia, give them a heads up. <laughs> I should really just start like messaging in the group chat for them, honestly. Okay, let me show you what I've been working on. Oh, one of them's in the the closet. But I'm super excited. I've been working on some fabric keychains. So I, I did some Lethal Company, guys. I've also been doing, like, all these squids. These all need to be cut and flipped and stuffed, but luckily they don't take too long. So squids and octolings here, um, along with 10 Lethal Company, guys. I don't even know how many of these I did. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
because I already started trimming one up. Oh no, an ad! Alright. Oh. If there's anything else I can no, that's okay. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Frog. Welcome. I paused my music for you. <laughs> Love that. Hi, hi. I'm just showing off right now the stuff that I've already done for Omnicon. Um, so like I said, I need to stuff those, but here, here is one thing. So, little lethal company guy. He's a little leak. A little keychain. I... I think he turned out so well. And now I'm obsessed with just these little tiny... Little tiny guys! Okay, so, um, because I loved how little and cute he turned out and I just want to hold him, I was like, what else can I do with this, this basic shape? And I've been wanting to make um, Sanrio characters, like the Hello Kitty friend things so I made Kuromi and it turned out so cute I'm still tweaking the mouth I would like the mouth to be a little darker so it shows up a little better but oh it turned out so good so then I was like I want to get little pom-poms to go here that are like pre-made so I just sew them on I'm like what about in this size what about a little friend for him she, yeah, I was, I keep calling them them. I don't, I don't know. Um, so just to be safe, I was like them, look at them. But I, I'm gonna look into more of the characters and making sure I pronounce them right too. I want to double check. But look at the little one. And I, so I go back and forth. This is a little bit shorter. Like they're, these are longer, and I cut them down. But I didn't know, what do you guys think? Do you like the longer so it waddles around more? Or do you like where they're attached kind of like McDonald toys that are just like, you know, you clip them onto your backpack, that kind of thing. Um, Cause I didn't like this at first because I just felt like this gap was like awkward and it was too long. But now that I've shortened it, I kind of, I'm kind of going back to this. I don't know. I kind of like them both. Yeah. If you make Tuxedo Sam, I'm going to buy one for my bestie. Ah! You love how you can shake them. Okay, yeah, I do like this. And then it kind of, since it's not a metal keychain, it kind of still makes the rattling. So I think that's nice when it comes to keychains. And like, again, I don't, I don't know. I said it in my vlog that I'm filming, but I don't know if I'd put this on my keys, you know, because it's going to get really dirty. And... It's giving Happy Meal, right? You like the shorter one? See, I think I'll just make a little bit of all of them because I'm conflicted. I do like this because it reminds me of McDonald's Happy Meal, but I also love this because it just dances around more. So maybe I'll just, we'll just go back and forth depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, but I would put this on like my backpack, you know, or purse uh, more than probably my keys. But it is, it's still a keychain. So yeah, this is what I've been working on. I'm so excited. I really like them. They will probably be, so my lethal company guys are 20 for this size. So I'm going to try it out at that price point. See how they do. And decide on that. But for these, I'm going to do them the same as my other keychains. That way they can be bundled together. So I do $12 and you can do two for 20. So if you buy two, they would be $10 a piece. And I think that's pretty good. Oh, <gasps> stop frogs. That's such a good idea. Do mystery bags with McDonald's style keychain. Ah, and I could do one with the characters. Cause you know, people would love the Sanrio. Yeah, Sanrio character, like mystery bag. For keychains, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. I've had um, a lot of my friends tell me I should start making these characters because they're just they're just fun little guys. 
people love mystery bags. They do. Okay, my mic is driving me crazy. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna have to stop looking at it. All right, but I was working on my melody and it would it'd be pretty much the same except for, of course, the pink head for the bunny ears. Um, and we'll give it like a little collar. But I know that they like to have their little ear like tucked down or both of them all the way down. So for my melody, I'm gonna make it bunny ears, but then like tack it so that one of them stays down. And um, sometimes they have bows and stuff. So I have these little pre-made bows that I bought at the uh, at the Hobby Lobby, I think. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe Walmart. But like this little bow. And I thought it would be so cute to go on its ear. Like sew it down. Yes. Um, so when I say tack, uh, sorry, I mean like sew it down. Like make a little tack is like referred to just like a little stitch to sew it down. Hello, welcome. We're talking about keychains. Okay, so I don't have any black pom poms, but this is what, this is the size they would be. And I do plan on selling these embroidery patterns, but I wanted to uh, get them kind of established first, like make sure I like how they turn out, but I uh, can't really see. Oh no, this is this, oh my gosh. This is the size the pom-pom would be. You kind of see? And I think that that's a pretty good size. I use these for uh, my Kirby of the month. They're actually gonna be on this Kirby of the month too, which is sword Kirby. I don't have one to show off because I shipped it out already. <laughs> I was like, what? Super cute profile pic, Hudson. OMG, I want to buy some of those, but I know I'll never use them. Oh, the little bows or the pom-poms either. Yeah, they're so cute. Yes, Hudson does great art or frogs. Cause you make frogs. <laughs> that is cute. Oh, I love the keychain. Thank you. Um, Yes, so Sword Kirby. I have a picture. I'll just pull up a picture real quick. And I have what the sticker looks like. But I do Kirby of the month. And this month is like Sword Kirby or Link Kirby. But here's what the sticker for my Patreon. You get a new Kirby every month for $20. You get a sticker and a matching plushie. And so there's the little yellow pom-pom that goes on the end of the hat. Um, yeah, and you can still get it till April. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I heard right. Both, because I love pom-poms, too. Thank you. Yeah, I just have this, um, it's like a little tackle box, but I mean, it's it's made for crafting. But I use this thing for all sorts of stuff. But my favorite is to keep these safety eyes in. And what I do is I put a piece of tape down over that section, and then I write in um, permanent marker. And so then when I run out of that eyes or whatever, or if I move it, I can peel the tape off and I'm not like messing up this box. Well, yeah, I have all, I also have like batteries and my rotary blades in here. But yeah, and I keep my extra needles, pom-poms are in here, command strips, cause we always need those. So this is handy if you guys need a little crafting box. Toolboxes work good too. Hi, May. Welcome. Oh, sorry. I feel like I just screamed. Hi, May. Welcome. <laughs> Okie dokie. So for today, I am kind of obsessed with making these keychains right now. So I think I might still work on like digitizing my melody and, uh, 
make a little matching keychain. And now Frogs is giving me the idea for mystery bags for keychains. And I just really want to make mystery bags now. Just so fucking cute. Congrats on 1K. Thank you, May. Yeah, we did it. Thank you, guys. We made it to 1K subs. And I had this whole dilemma because I registered my AdSense account, which is like the Google account that you make so that you can do run ads and stuff and YouTube pays you for it. And since I did a business account, it wanted my business like tax stuff, which is fine, except for I don't have like a business license because I use my like personal because it's I'm just a one person band. So usually you can still use your like social security number for that, but that wasn't acceptable for YouTube terms. So I had to make a whole new AdSense account, which wasn't as big of a deal as I thought it was going to be. Cause usually it can take up to like three weeks to get that approved. And I was like, well, thankfully I'm doing it now cause they don't let you cash out to like a hundred dollars. And I had like $10 and I was like, if I just lost like a hundred dollars because I set up the wrong AdSense account, I'm going to be so sad. But ten dollars, I was like, it hurts, but if I don't get it back, it'll be fine. Turns out it just, it reconnected to the other account, so it was totally fine. Um, so I didn't have to worry about that. So we can officially get the ad money coming in, which I'm excited about. And I hope to release a video at some point on like how much like it of course will change and it wouldn't be the same for everyone and it's a little confusing to try to figure out but i do think it would be cute just to or not cute i think it'd be cool and really interesting to look at the analytics of like how ad revenue works i feel like people love the thrill of mystery boxes oh yeah joey and i it was in my last live. Um, Joey and I got a mystery box from this like flea market thing. And we kind of knew that it probably wouldn't be anything good. Uh, if you watch my last vlog, you can see what we got. But it was 20 bucks and it was just random stuff. Like there was no rhyme or reason to it. And I think we will use one of the items out of the six that was in there one of them was like, okay, this is nice. Would I have paid $20 for that one item? No, but eh, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Congrats, thank you guys. That's awesome, I'm waiting to get a pin from them to verify my address to keep getting payments. Oh, okay, interesting. Is it because like you had to change your address or? um something else anyways i need to go shower and then study bye 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 welcome thanks for coming by have a good rest of your day all right i'm gonna actually get to work on something um but i did already send this to my google drive so i can wander over here and do some embroidery designing, but I don't have like, unless I do like a face cam or I could do screen, but also I'm like, well, we just did embroidery stuff on the last stream. So I don't know what you guys think. Do we want to do more embroidery? Um, I can work on these Totoro hats that I've been working on forever. I don't know if it's a Canada thing. I had to take a photo of my driver's license and then after that, they said they were mailing a pen to verify that I live here. Oh, okay. See, I'm supposed to upload a picture of my driver's license and maybe they'll remind me, but then I went through that whole thing where I'm like, no, I'm actually just, it's just me. I'm just personal. I'm not like a big business. Then it was like, oh, okay. So I didn't have to do a driver's license picture. I'm sure they'll, it'll come back around and they'll be like, driver's license please oh my gosh
I'm so conflicted. Because if I do Totoro hats, like I was working on five, but I don't want to do five. So maybe we could just do two. But the other thing is that's going to be like almost like probably the whole stream. And I want something more enthusiastic. Do I want to make more keychains? Oh, they're so freaking cute. Now I'm just thinking about what I want the mystery box to look like. If I could make a cute little McDonald's mystery box, that would be so cute. But copyright. But we're already working in copyright territory, you know? I say, wake whatever you want. Thank you, frogs. I... I think I should do at least two Totoro hats. To have at least two Totoro hats at this convention. I've already sewed up the ears. So there's two sets of ears. And I already sewed the the leaves like that was like three streams ago. So it shouldn't take as long. Usually I say two hours per hat, but since we've already done some work on this, it probably won't take that long. A lot of people use heat syllable tea bags to do mystery bags. If you're interested in that, I'd like to try that sometime. Heat sealable mystery bags. That sounds really cool. I'll have to look into that. Like, I guess just, um, that way they're sealed, but not, you don't have to use like tape or anything crazy. Even though seal sealing with heat sounds kind of crazy to me because I've never done that before other than with like that shrink wrap stuff okay so we have one leaf all right maybe i didn't sew up all these leaves this leaf since my stuff is so small i use easter eggs for my mystery keychains they also fit fit in my claw machine <gasps> Oh, I've been wanting to get a claw machine. This would be a good thing to go in the claw machine. I want a really big claw machine that, honestly, because I want to open up a, like, shop and I would want a claw machine in there. Or um, have another business let me put a claw machine in their business and put my stuffed animals in the claw machine. But a little claw machine would feed the hunger, you know, for a little bit of the big claw machine that I want to get. You can use a hair straightener to seal them. Oh, then buyers just tear it open. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have to see because I do like, I think, um, I think mystery bags would do really good at this next convention I'm doing. Uh, the Omnicon one is at a college campus and I'm going in with the idea that college students don't have a lot of money so I'm not focusing too much on my hats because those are like $50 and I'm not saying nobody's gonna buy them but I do think I should focus more on my $10, $20 items And I think mystery bags would be really good for that because people already love mystery bags and 
I feel like mystery bags that are cheaper is going to cause people oops, is going to cause people to come back and want to get more or they'll tell their friends and then their friends will be like, "Oh, I want to get one." So I'm now I'm like, do I just go full hardcore making mystery keychains? And then do I still put the keychains out for sale and make the mystery keychains cheaper because they don't know what they're getting? So it's like, do you want to pay more for the one and know what you're getting or do you want it cheaper? Yes, mine's a small one, but I got it from Five Below. It's so bulky though, I barely use it. Does it actually work? Because I've seen that some of them, like, they cannot pick up that much. So I've always been leery. I love having cheaper items available for my events as my target audience is kids and teens. They usually have a small allowance or not a lot of money. Same. <laughs> What is that thing your thread is sitting on? I wanted to try learning machine sewing and I have a lot of thread in that shape. So what you're using seems like this is, I think I just call it a, a thread stand. Uh, usually it has a stick at the bottom, but I traveled so much with these that it breaks off. But usually there'd be a stick sticking up and you can put this on there. And then, yeah, you just thread it through here, and then you just thread your machine like you would usually would. And it is very handy because... Oh my gosh, my phone is going off. It's very handy because this is cheaper. Buying these big spools of thread than, you know, if you buy the little ones. And if you sew a lot, you're going to go through those so fast. So I actually use serger thread. The only bad thing is the, they say that serger thread is not as strong because on a serger machine, you're using like four of these type of cones. So when I'm hand sewing, I do double up my thread. That way it is stronger or I do use a thicker thread to sew on or to sew with. And then they also have this, I think I got this one from Amazon. Oh my gosh. From Amazon. It's so dusty because <laughs> everything in this house is dusty. But this one actually extends and it also came with a stick that you can put in there. But again, I don't use it a whole lot just because it's easier. When I was moving a lot, this was easier. But if you had like a little thing of thread, you could make it this small and put it up through there. Um, but you can also extend it up super high. Yeah, so I think just thread cone, maybe cone stand, thread stand, that kind of thing. Very handy. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise, guys. And that's personally for me, no shame on how anyone prices their items. I just know feeling of wanting something but not having enough money for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like having a variety of prices. So, like, if they see something, they can save up for it. But also, I like having... If I have it in a plush, I like to try to have a sticker of it, too. That way, I at least know that I have something that they like closer to their price range. I use Coates and Clark's all-purpose thread. That's a very good just go-to. And you can get that anywhere. Like Walmart has it. So that is always a good go-to. Yeah, definitely look into it, May. I would love to see what you make if you start sewing some stuff. I still want to set up a Discord. I I barely post in my Patreon Discord anyways. But I would it would be fun so that you guys could share your art and stuff there and we can follow like if we start new hobbies. 
So I'm going to try to look into that more. And also just a place where I can, like, post, like, when I immediately get into, like, a convention just to give you guys a heads up. Or if you have, like, immediate questions about conventions. And then just a place where I can post, like, hey, I'm, a I'm wise. I'm also alive. <laughs> Because I am bad about not posting on social medias for a while if I'm, like, if I don't have a convention or anything that I'm doing. Super strong. Thread, yes. Yeah, and some of those are super thick, too. Like, of course, you can get different weights of it. I'll try to help. I can try to help with the Discord, too. I know some people that... <laughs> Uh, could help, too. We're very glad you're alive. <laughs> Thank you. I'm alive and I'm wise. My mom does the, like, Siri text-to-talk a lot. And she also does, like, where she, it'll play back to her. Like, she's like, read my messages. And... I texted her, like, no, I'm going live today. I'm, I'm not going to, they were going to like go out to eat or something. I was like, sorry. And I just know that if it played out, out loud, it would be like, no, I'm going to live today. <laughs> I've decided to live. Or she's going to read it and be so confused. Even though I try to be like, yeah, I'm going live on my YouTube. But still, you don't... That's the bad thing about having Siri, like, read stuff is... Is it going to read it correctly? There was one time... I don't know if I told this story uh, to you guys. But uh, we were going on a trip. And my brother was coming to put in the car seat because we were taking my niece his daughter and my mom like I said does the voice to text stuff and so she's like we're here at your house and so I just automatically like yell hurry or hurry up <laughs> and so then Siri reads the message back and it's like we're here at your house hurry <laughs> and my mom is like no, don't send. <laughs> I was like, no, what do you mean? That was good. <laughs> but thank you, frogs. Thank you, yeah. I will let you know what I'm going to do. Like, if I could just keep the Discord one and let everyone in, that would be nice. And keep who's already in there. Or if I can just make it where it's, like, privated on some pages for Patreon. And then there's one for everyone else. I'm just not... Like, I don't know a lot about how to work Discord. I just join other people's Discords and they do all the mod stuff. <laughs> I'm just there. I went to the grocery this morning, so now I want to eat everything in our house. And I'm just trying to not do that. I also got some B12 vitamins. Supposedly to help with energy, and I guess it's good for your metabolism, too. Uh, someone gave Joey one at work because he was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> he he doesn't really drink coffee in the mornings. He used to do, like, energy drinks and stuff, but he hasn't lately at all or hasn't even done coffee. So someone gave him, like, a B12, and I was like, cool. That's a good idea. I've been wanting to get vitamins. Like, I'm pretty sure I... 
really need iron. I think I'm bad at getting iron deficiencies because sometimes when I go to donate blood, they're like, we can't take your blood. Your iron is low. Okay, so you said I need to do Tuxedo Sam next. I think that's the ping one, right? Frogs, you said. I'm going to add it to my list. <gasps> yeah, the little penguin. So cute. Every time I hear the word tuxedo, um, my nephew... He was probably three at the time was playing some game on his phone and there was like a cat or something wearing a tuxedo and he's like may may because that's what um my family calls me may may what's he wearing and i'm like a tuxedo and he's like tuxedo and i'm like yeah tuxedo and he's like tuxedo <laughs> And that's all I can think. That's how I want to say tuxedo now. Tuxedo? It's like, come, it, it's now like five syllables. <laughs> I think it wasn't the same. It might have been the same year, actually. He's probably the same age. He was like in the kitchen. And the microwave goes off. And he's like, oh. They made them all cooked. I'm like, what? And he's like, them all cooked. I was like, I didn't make anything. I was like, what's in there? And he's like, mashed potatoes. And these are all Snapchats that I have on my phone. So they live in my head rent free. Because I get a reminder every year. Which is just so darn cute. I was also going to focus on stickers too. And I... Oh, technically my stickers should ship today that I've been waiting like almost three weeks on now. And... Those are going to be loot bug and more babam stickers. But I don't know if anyone else knows the guy that's on TikTok. Joey is obsessed with him. It's a, a boy thing, a man thing. And it's this guy that plays like video games. And he says like, sorry for cussing. And he does like the little finger point. And he also says like, Tuesday, Tuesday, and like flaps his wings or something, his wings, flaps his arms like they're wings. But I think it's a meme right now, and I want to make a sticker of one that just says, sorry for cussing. Wow, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I didn't know anything about it. It's on his talk to, talk tick. It's on his TikTok all over his page. Uh, but one of them, when I was watching his TikToks with him, came up and it was a girl's perspective. And it's like every girl's boyfriend right now. And it was just a guy doing all the stuff that that guy does. Like like I just said, like, where it's like, sorry for cussing. And this whole thing and I just like slowly turn and look at him and he's like laughing hysterically. I was like, that is the most accurate thing I've seen in forever on TikTok. <laughs> I also want to make one that's like boba themed. Um that's like boba with the B word that I don't want to say on the live right now, but I think that would be cute. One of those cute aesthetic things, but it's like curse words, but it looks cute. (laughs) 
but I haven't got this. I haven't doodled it yet. So that's what I, I gotta doodle sticker ideas. But I was trying to think of memes that are popular with colleges right now. Because that's where this convention is going to be. Is that a college? Alright, let me try to remember how I laid these out. I think it was just like this. But I can't remember if two on the inside or two on the outside. So I need to look up a picture. I do have it in my favorites. Yeah. Okay, so two on the it's on the outside, but I call it the inside. On the one that's on the small part. Not that I think it's gonna matter. I don't think people are gonna be like <gasps> she put the markings on the wrong side. Technically, according to my picture, they go here. Just like so. And the pocket goes down here. So I do want to make sure they're kind of like equal space. So we'll move these up a little bit. Looks good. Yes, I made those squids. Because Splatoon, I feel like, is always pretty popular. I'm hoping Lethal Company still pretty popular. They came out with a new moon update. <laughs> So, that hopefully will help. Also, I rebooked for Lexington Comic Con, which is in Lexington, Kentucky. Bethany helped me choose my table. And it is the most expensive table that I've bought to date. It was $1,050. And that was a big leap for me. Before that, the most expensive one I had was $700, which was at Katsukon, or maybe $800. And that was for, <clears throat> that was at Katsukon for corner table, which I guess probably came out to be 10 by 10. It was probably more like an 8 by 8 size. But this is for a 10 by 10. And the plan is if Bethany can come, she's going to come and sell too. So we would split that cost possibly. But if she doesn't or doesn't want to, I will be working my butt off to make sure that I profit. But I think it'll be worth it. I'll at least make it back, I feel like. And I've been wanting to take the leap, take the jump. We'll try it out. And I have I have till all of next year, until March of next year to start prepping. Also, sad news. Um, there's a convention in, uh, I think it's Pigeon Forge, somewhere in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. I don't know exact right off, but it's anime, Smoky Mountain anime, and they were supposed to have Robbie Damon. And honestly, that was the only reason that I bought a table to go, was because I was like, no matter what, 
Robbie Damon's going to be there. And if I don't make anything, I at least will have met Robbie Damon again. And then I just saw their Facebook post last night that he canceled. Along with, like, two other actors, too. I guess they're all in the same, like, TV series or whatever. And it's filming. So, I'm, I was $100 for the table, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna room with Bethany, like, I'm gonna stay with her, so it'll be a free hotel, <laughs> or, you know, I'm gonna stay at her apartment. So, I think I'll still do it, but, uh, I probably will be very sad if I don't make the $100. But it's okay, I wanted to test the waters because they do a couple of conventions in the area and I kind of wanted to know if this is one I should start looking into more for like just little one day conventions or is it going to be not worth it? Are Comic Con tables usually more expensive than anime conventions? The biggest anime con here is 60k plus attendees is much lower than my local Comic Con, which is 20k attendees. Um, I think it just kind of depends. Maybe the amount of vendors helped makes a table cheaper too. There's a lot at the big anime con. Yeah, I think honestly, the bigger the convention usually is a Comic Con because Comic Cons just happen to be bigger than anime cons right now. But the bigger the convention, the more expensive the table is. Um, Megacon, of course, which is like the biggest one in the biggest Comic Con in the South, I think, and almost like I think it might be second in the United States or North America, maybe even. The Artist Alley tables, which is what we sell at, are almost 500 now, like they're getting up there. I think it's 475 now or is that what we paid last year and now it is 500 i can't remember it's in my phone um and we so for lexington comic-con it's pretty big it's the biggest one in kentucky i think but they do still have artist tables but the thing was is they moved the artists out into this whole other room and I'm very iffy when they move things, especially if it's, we're gonna move the artist out by themselves somewhere totally random, and you might not get a lot of foot traffic. That worries me. And it was $250 for the artist table, which is the same price that it was this year, but I still was gonna get two artist tables, which would have already been 500. And with that, you could have got an inline, which is like not a corner table anywhere, a big 10 by 10 booth inside where we usually are for like 600. So I already knew that I was going to stay where we usually were and just pay that extra money. But then I was like, well, what if we get a corner and we just upgrade and give it a shot? Because my other thought process was if I don't, need a hotel i don't have to buy one like of course if people want to split with me i will just to be closer but it's a two hour drive so if i needed to drive i could do it and i've already decided unless they change something for lexington comic-con i'm not going to do thursday because i only made a hundred and like fifty dollars on thursday of this year because it's just like a comic book preview night. And that's just for like four hours. And most people are just going to get the comic books. I think it's four seventy five dollars for Megacon. Okay, so yeah. But that's for a, that's for our artist table. Which usually they give artists a better deal. Because we they understand like we have to usually remake our whole stuff or order it. Like we're not the big comic book dealers and stuff. But if you wanted a 10 by 10, because maybe you have bigger product and more stuff and need more space, then that's getting up into the thousands for like that 10 by 10 booth. It 
it goes up. But yeah, it just always varies. I think, honestly, it's the bigger the convention, the more expensive a table is going to be. The more well-known a convention. I mean, even for... And I do think Comic-Con conventions are more expensive than anime conventions. Because I did that Terrificon um, convention in Connecticut, and it was a Comic-Con. And supposedly, it was the biggest Comic-Con convention in Connecticut but I don't feel like they had the turnout to be charging $375 for an, an artist table for a small table and I think I made like 2000 when I could make that much at some of my anime conventions that I only pay $160 for the table So I do think Comic-Cons are kind of notorious for raising their prices for their booth. And it might be because they get more of the Comic-Con and pop figure people and they're trying to keep it more, you know, like try to weed out more people. I don't know. I feel like Totoro is good for college, too, because um, Studio Gilby, I feel like you can like that and not be into anime or not be into, I don't know, I don't want, like, you could like Studio Gilby and not call yourself a nerd or a weeb, whatever you want to say. Um... That's more pop culture-ish, I feel, than if we're getting into, like, a specific... Even though this this uh, little college one that I'm doing is more anime-themed. I think they are trying to make it more anime-centric. Did I use that word correctly? Alright, let's sew on Totoro. Totoro fuzzies. So like, I had a coffee this morning, but that was like 6.30, so it's probably wore off, right? Maybe. It's getting there. But I feel like I have a lot of energy. Now, is it from the B12 vitamin? Or is it from my anxiety right now going live, you know? Like the anxiety and... um adrenaline pumping through my body who knows the world may never know you tell me So yeah, Totoro, I feel is a good, safe bet. I would like to make a couple more Soot Sprite hats because um, I said I don't want to focus as much on hats, but I mostly meant my scooties, my long hats, because I would like to focus on some bucket hats and some beanies, even though beanie season is kind of, we're kind of getting out of it. You know, people still are wearing beanies in the summer. So I'm going to appeal to them. And try to make some beanies too. But I do have a pretty good restock still left over from Lexington Comic Con. Because that was the last one I did. Feels like an eternity ago. I wore... My beanie, I think, did I tell you guys this last time? I wore the beanie that um, Bethany made me. It's got little cat ears. 
into my stepdad's shop, which is a bunch of older people, mostly men, that work in there. Because it's like a welding fabrication shop. And I got so many... I, won't, I don't want to necessarily say compliments, but... Um, what would you call it? I got so many people talking about it. Like, so many people... Comments. We'll just say comments. Not necessarily compliments. Um... The first one being my stepdad, who was like, is it beanie day today? <laughs> and given, it was supposed to get up to like 70 that day, I think. And I wore it, which I feel like a lot of people wear hats, is because your hair is greasy. And that's why I wore this beanie. Uh, other than I also think it's adorable and cute, so of course I wore it for that reason. But the reason I picked it today was because my hair was greasy. So he comes in, he's like, is it beanie day today? And I was like, yeah, did you bring yours? <laughs> and then the other one was this guy, one of the guys that works there. And he was kind of, he was nice. He was like, I like your hat. And I was like, thank you. And then the other one was some guy that, a customer that just came in and he's like, you cold today? And I was like, no, I'm doing good right now. And he's just like, oh, I'm looking for so-and-so. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I've never got so many comments on... And I usually wear... But I guess that's my only thought. I usually wear, like, hats and beanies in. So my thought is more people commented because it was actually warm outside. And they were like, what is this girl doing wearing beanies in 70-degree weather? And I was like, listen, this is just what you do now. Beanies aren't just for the cold. Also, I've started saying beanies more, but in Kentucky, where we usually, or like where I, what I usually say in Kentucky is togies. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. It's like an abbreviation of toboggan which is a sled, but my grandma also calls, like, beanie hats toboggans, so we call them togies. I don't know, do you guys, I, when I told Joey that, I was like, oh, don't forget your togi, like, when we first started dating, he's like, what? I'm like, oh, like, your hat, your, your togi. I'm like, what do you call it? And he's like, a beanie? I'm like, oh, I'm, I guess, <laughs> I guess it's called beanie. So now I've just wiped togi completely out of my vocabulary, um, but my stepdad said it the other day. Like, he didn't say, is it beanie day? <laughs> when he came in, he said, is it togi day today? But even when I recalled my memory to retell you that story, I didn't hear togi, I heard beanie. But there's so many words that I, being like living in Kentucky for most of my life and then living up north for a few years, there's a lot of fun things that we say differently that they call something else. And I had a list going. But the main one being like, a crawfish, like the little, the mini lobster looking things that live in the creeks. We call those crawdads. And then I think this is more of a Joey's family thing, but they make what's called bellinis. And when I think of bellini, I think of like peach bellini or strawberry bellini, which is like a, a sweet thing. Uh, I think of Bath and Body Work candles and soaps, but they their bellinis are more like potato cakes, which is like p 
potatoes, onions, like flour and milk. And it's like a potato cake. And that's what we call, that's what we call them here. Speaking of sweet stuff, I been watching a lot of Good Mythical Morning. Like that is our go-to show now to put on when I'm like falling asleep. And they love peanut butter and chocolate and peanut butter. And I also love chocolate and peanut butter. Joey hates both of those things. <laughs> so they were trying ice cream flavors on there and trying to find the best peanut butter chocolate ice cream on one of the ones that I watched. And I believe that they, hello? I believe that they said the haagen peanut butter chocolate was like their top ranking. So I got some. And I remember that they liked it because it has the peanut butter like ribbons in it. So I got some today at the store. That'll be my dessert for dinner. And I'm gonna be thinking about it all day. Yes. Yeah, honestly, I probably would have had to, like, roll the dice because if they had half-baked or tonight dough in Ben and Jerry's, but they didn't, Bethany. Can you believe that? They had fish food, which I was tempted. But when I didn't see tonight dough, I was like, well, let me go check the peanut butter chocolate haagen -Dazs that they're talking about. But no tonight, though. I was so sad. Because I do like the little crunchy cookie crumbles in the tonight, though. And, you know, lots of ice cream don't have that. Unless it's, like, cookies and cream. Oh, yeah, Bethany, I forgot that you're off work today. So I'll have to be prepared to play Boulder's Gate as soon as... Joey gets home. <laughs> I feel like that one's so popular though. I know. Are you working on anything, Bethany? And frogs, I know you said you were prepping too. Are you making frogs? I've seen all your your little sewing ones. Bethany, did you see my fern shirt? Joey got it for me. I don't know if I told you about it yesterday. Bethany's making frog bandanas. And she finished some bees. Ooh, maybe I should be making frogs then. Everybody else is making frogs. I don't even know where I would start. I did see this really cute... Um one that somebody made I think it was on my Instagram reels and it was like pickle frogs and they called it that because they were using the minky that has the like bubbles in it and so when they sewed it it did look like a pickle frog and I thought that was so cute so I want to make a little I would love to make some frog plushies because I have been wanting to make some things that are more like not related to fandoms more original stuff but also just like cute little plushies and I know frogs are popular possums are popular moths are popular right now I, I really want to make a moth keychain and put a squeaker inside of it because uh wasn't that in like the Godzilla the big moth 
didn't didn't they like scream? Doesn't it make a high pitched noise? Or maybe I'm thinking of Mothman. I'm just really thinking of moths, like moths with the squeaker, or like with my little uh, bird shaker. I think that would be fun. Because a lot of people love the squeakers and the shakers, but they don't really know what the squeakoids are from Animal Crossing. So I would like to incorp incorporate them into something else. Mantra Mommy? Yas? Does she make a high-pitched squeal to to ward off her enemies? Is that, is that a thing? I know we watched it in theaters, but it's been a while. It's been a while. Forgot where I was. I was like, how many more of these do I have to still want? Yeah, can you imagine if I was actually working on five of these? Oh my gosh. Be here for hours. And, uh, I, I don't think I've showed it off yet, but I have a, uh, I have my axolotl coloring book finished, which I'm gonna give away at my next convention, the Danville Comic Con one. Oop, that one. It's on May 4th, which is Star Wars Day, but also free comic book day. So I'm gonna give away a free coloring book. They're gonna be very tiny. Like, I think they're four by six, maybe. I made them small enough so that I can staple them because uh, I was making them like closer to five by seven size, but I wasn't able to get my stapler around it to staple the pages together. But I did just get uh, my new ink in so I can actually print it here. I was printing it at uh, my stepdad's shop when I had extra time trying to get the dimensions right but now I'm gonna use like a totally different printer and do the dimensions what did I do I sewed one on this one and didn't sew the other two I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> we'll have to come back to that Joey said he's 11 episodes from catching up on Critical Role um, because he listens to, like, two episodes a day at work, which is, like, eight hours because, like, say each podcast is four hours each. I'm never, I'm not going to be able to catch, I'm not going to be able to pass him because he will probably... I think that'll take him maybe a week and a half and he'll probably get there and then I'll just have to catch up to the live episodes. But the good thing we found out is they go live on Thursdays with their new episodes on YouTube and like Twitch. And he usually is off on Fridays. So we can stay up and watch Critical Role live. And I've always wanted to do that. So maybe we can have a little watch party. I will probably fall asleep because it does go to like 2 a.m., right? Because they're in California and on California time. But make a little popcorn, like some little snacks. I did get more popcorn today too. All right, now we can finish up this one that I just abandoned. Shopify's point of sale system helps you sell in person at every stage of your business. Oh my gosh, I swear some days I like get no ads and then other days 
it's just all ads. And I only really notice it when I'm doing these lives. Like, of course, if I'm watching stuff on my TV, I'm like, I don't, I don't mind ads. It's fine. I also have Kirby stuff um, ready to just like kind of be sewn up like with their like feet and stuff. I think I still need to make, I need to cut gray feet and, or gray arms and black feet. But it's going to be the most Kirby colors that I've had in a bit because someone ordered a yellow Kirby. So I made, when I make my Kirbys, I make five because it embroiders their face. So I'll have four more Kirbys to take with me. And then I always make a bunch of pink Kirbys. Blue Kirbys I still have a lot left over from my last convention. And then I'll have black because um, blue, black, and pink are the most popular colors. And then I made some gray ones. So we'll have blue, black, pink, gray, yellow, and maybe... If I have extra green fabric, maybe I'll just make a few green ones. But I think that would be cute. I have the, the color rainbows again. And just a heads up, I haven't shared this yet, but I am doing my first, I think I've shared this part, is I'm doing my first Pride event, which is um, in Lexington, Kentucky. It's in Rupp Arena again, where LCTC was. But where <laughs> i thought i was done with this again and i literally abandoned it again uh but i'm going to bring some pride kirby's again i haven't done pride kirby's since like my second month of doing patreon so it's been almost two years but it, it will be two years because i did it in june of like 2022 I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to use the exact same fabric. So if you already have a pride Kirby, this one will be different. I just got to find some cute pride fleece. But yeah, be on the lookout. And then I will probably have them there. And then if they sell out, that's the only place they'll be. If I have extras, I'll probably let my Patreon members have first grabs at them. And then I'll just share them uh, with everyone else. But I'll try to I'll try to go in with extras because they were they were popular when I first did them. I think my B Kirby's have been the most popular. And then probably the pride one. And then that, after that, I don't know. The, um, the Bobomb one was pretty popular, but I don't think it was, like, any more than the usuals. I have 20 slots open, and I think the closest I got to that was, like, 16. But we average about 10, which is nice. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's a little lower. All right, we put the pocket in and now we're gonna pin this down. Pin it all together.
Oh, you know what? I should at least try to make a few Pochita hats, too. Because I do feel like that's popular with college guys. I think, honestly, anything that's popular right now will probably be popular at this convention, too. I don't think it's going to be specifics. I keep skipping the ad and then I forget to check over here to make sure my mic is still working. Consider this your sign. Oh my gosh, and I just get an ad. <laughs> really? Why? I thought about doing with this vlog that I'm filming for this week, which is just Omnicon prep. Editing a little bit and then, you know, editing it up to what I have filmed and then edit more. But the thing with my computer is if I shut it off because I have an external hard drive, it kind of gets mad at itself and it's like we can't it panics and it's like we can't find the files they're not here and so either it takes forever and i have to like try to recover the files and you know tell it to calm down and be like they're right here look i found them for you or i just leave it on the whole time which is not good for my laptop and then usually by the time i'm ready to finish editing it's like super slow And sometimes I have to end up just restarting it anyways, and then it has to go through its panic mode anyways. So I think I'll probably just still wait. I'll probably edit it Thursday. It just takes my time out of con prepping. But hopefully it won't take too long. It will probably be kind of long because I talk about a whole bunch of things. I talk about my YouTube AdSense thing, like I said earlier, that kind of went crazy. And I clicked on the wrong thing, and so then I had to fix it. But I also show off my process of making my embroidery for the, the keychains that I was showing off earlier. And then whatever, you know, tomorrow holds. Today and tomorrow. I'm gonna have to start carrying around more business cards because I... I wore my Gengar beanie when I took my recycling. Like... You know, yeah, very exciting, right? I took my recycling. But someone commented on my beanie there. And I was like, well, I made it. But I don't have a business card for you. <laughs> and while I'm still at the recycle place, because I, you know, they're getting stuff out of my trunk. And I have um, vinyl stickers on the back. And one of them says Duke Loot, like hashtag Duke Loot, which is like the hashtag that I use for like, my Patreon stuff, but honestly, anything that you get from me, I usually, I haven't done it lately, but I was trying to be like, tag it Duke Loot so, you know, others can see all the different stuff that I have. And so the other guy was like, what's Duke Loot? And I was like, oh, that's my business. I 
I have a sewing business and I make things and do embroidery like this and I pointed to like my beanie on my head. So I just I gotta rep rep my business and hand out those business cards like candy. Speaking of my credit card, I have Capital One. It said I get 6% cash back at Vistaprint right now. And I need to order some business cards. But I didn't see how long that offer is good for. But if you guys have Capital One credit card, you probably get 6% back on Vistaprint orders. So check it out. And then I keep getting this uh, reminder that where I get my DTFs from, which is Atlantic Vinyl, Atl Atl Atlanta Vinyl, I think I get 10% off, but I'm not sure if that's for everyone or just me. That's for my, my shirt transfers. All right, there are these pinned up. So we can do the long process of sewing a straight line. And the sock is crooked. I don't have the, I have the eyes made, but I don't have, and I think I have the nose cut, but I don't think I have the whiskers cut. just got really focused on sewing this straight line. I don't know if you guys noticed. I really zoned in. Thinking about Studio Gilby soot sprites. Maybe my coffee is wearing off. I was gonna say that it's like always raining on Tuesdays. And it's like always raining when I go live. But it did rain this morning, but it's kind of clear now. It's actually really nice outside. Oh, I can feel the fuzzies on my nose. I also thought about printing off some more of my DVD stickers. Because I know when I was in college, DVD was popular. League of Legends, which is still popular, but League of Legends was also popular too. But I'm like, was that just me? Was that other people? I also have so many link hats because I made all of those. I think you guys probably watched them a little bit on my live streams. And I think I'm going to lower the price of link hats at these next couple of conventions down to $20 or $25 right now. So if you guys are interested in a link hat, 
shoot me a message or an email or something and I will send you a discount code so that you can get a link hat for $20 and then you just might have to pay shipping or if you're going to be at a convention I can hold it for you Oh yeah, so many link hats, and that's the dark green link hats. I need to make some more rifle green, and then I did finish up a black because I ran out of the black cord that goes on the side. So I had it finished for a while, but not with the cord on the side. And I've just been kind of cutting stickers while we play Boulder's Gate. So maybe I will print off some more stickers tonight so I can cut them. A Mothman hat too, like an act, like a hooded hat. Maybe I can do it for this convention. I don't know. I just have so much I want to do. But I would also love to do a Mothman bucket hat. Would be cute. Give it the little fuzzy antennas. Antenna. Put up our corners. I'm gonna turn these inside out later. Sew all these up first. I'm back to thinking about my keychain mystery bags because I'd probably have to break them into categories and the Sanrio would be like one category but then I don't know if I would put Lethal Company in like a category like I could do video game category but that's not well known I 
I don't want someone to be like upset when they get a like a lesser known video game character. This is where I wish I had a really cool, like, label printer where I could print labels that had, like, a picture of what's in the box. <gasps> That'd be so cute! Might just have to like write their names or do a little doodle. But you do kind of already have a doodle because I doodled it before I turned it into a keychain so I could get the proportions right. The puppies are sleeping. Maybe also do like in this little keychain size, like the Boulder Gate, Boulder Gate characters, and the detail just couldn't be like crazy. So then I'm like, will it show? Like, will it actually come through? What I was wanting, and then give them like little just black eyes, just little pupils. But I freaking love them. You could also make this size like a keychain too. If you want, like for your backpack or purse or whatever. Hang it in your car. That might be a little bit too big. Might be too distracting. Shadowheart is live. I, I wanted like a sticker of that. <laughs> I did see someone that made really beautiful embroidered sweatshirts that had their faces on them. And it didn't say like Shadowheart is life, but it said something like similar. But it had all the different ones. Maybe it was like Shadowheart's team or Shadowheart's side or something like that. And I just really love that embroidery on it. And that's the moment when I wish that I had a really big embroidery machine so I can embroider on sweatshirts. We'll get there one day. I want to put these embroidery files on like Etsy uh, so that other people can use them and I want to sell them. But I don't know. I don't want to get copyright strike. I don't know how. I need to test the waters, but I don't want to get in trouble. 
But I Googled it, and there's a lot of stuff on there, so... Unless they just haven't done, like, a clean-out recently. I know, that's always the risk you take with copyright. Where's you, puppy? All right, I'm gonna potty break, uh, but then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna turn these inside out and we can sew the ears on. And then we will, we're over halfway with these. I'm gonna let the dogs out too really quick. Oh, pop on my back. When you find a deal on your favorite thing in the McDonald's app and order it, does that technically count as online shopping? Save money with the app. Ba -ba 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 -ba. At participating McDonald's, prices may vary.
All right, sorry. My mom called me to ask him a question. Okay. Totoro, Totoro. Okay, here's the picture she sent me. Wanted me. Do I? Nope. It looks like my brother's handwriting. And the reason I think it's my brother's handwriting is because he's left-handed, and the way that the... The K goes? I don't know. Something, I looked at this and I was like, that's left-handed writing. I don't know. Anyways, this part down here kind of looks like my handwriting, but... I don't know. That's what happens when you have so many people working. And nobody, like, there's not one consistent person there that handles all that stuff. I don't know. I try my best. Alright. Turn these hats inside out. And then we make sure the white pocket is on the white side. Wait, hold on, let me check something. I think April 1st. Oh no, I did. April, it was April's full, April Fool's Day. And I think I did go work at the shop. Does anybody else like remember like what they're doing by going back and like checking their pictures and being like, where was I this day? Let me see. If I have any pictures. But it could have been me. I was in the shop that day. <laughs> I was there. Right. Fold this over. We're going to put the ears in here. Over and over. Why are you whining? Buddy. Oh, what is it? Why didn't you go outside with the rest of your brother and sister? Hmm? Why didn't you go? Oh my gosh. I tried to let you outside. I tried. I tried to tell you.
but you didn't want to. I don't want to go outside. Thank you. Do you want to go outside now? Do you want to go outside? Okay. Go outside. Come on. Let's go. Your brother was lonely. See, they wanted to stay outside. So why don't you go out there with them, huh? Why didn't you go out there with them? Ridley. <laughs> they don't have to come inside just because you want to be inside. <laughs> Welcome back, frogs. Well, I told you, why didn't you go outside with them? I got some Joe's puppies right now. Are you guys giving kisses? I don't know why you're whining at me. <laughs> Alright, so there's one. Here in, I think that's a good space. I don't know, maybe I think it might need to be moved over a little bit more towards the center. My neighbor is starting to sell her stuff at craft markets and comes to me for advice and stuff. That's so cool! I love that. I think that's really cool that you have a neighbor that does that too, because like. I don't, I've never lived close to, like, even when I was in an apartment, I never lived close to anyone that, like, did that, so. That would be so fun. You could do, like, craft days. And just, like, prep together. It's kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> Except for I'm just, you guys get to see me, but I don't get to see you. But I love little craft parties. The dogs still think I'm talking to them. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm talking to you guys, technically. But I'm more talking to the people in the computer. Make sure I get back to see my mic. Frog just got me thinking about a claw machine too. Do I go try to find a claw machine? Because I'm sure that would be a big hit too. And then I don't know what the general like senses is do you do play until you win do you just kind of get you know you pay five dollars and get so many tries like what is what is the general rule that everyone does for that Which I know it takes up a lot of room on your table. So that would be the other thing is like, do I have room to do that? She crochets and told me if I buy the yarn, she'll make me lily pads to sell with my frogs. Oh, that's so cute. That's such a good idea. Claw machines or gotcha machines. Yeah. 
Which I feel like gotcha machines are more expensive, right? Like, aren't they, like, kind of harder to get? Because they come straight from Japan. You do play until you win. Okay. So then if that's the case... I don't know. I don't know how much I would want to charge. Because, like, I would like to at least sell my keychains for, like, $10 max. But if I don't do play until you win, then I would be down to be like, okay, for $5, you get, like, so many tries. Because I feel like the real thing that people are doing is, like, they want to play it. So that's why they're coming to, to do it. And, I mean, of course, they want to win something. But gotcha machines are expensive. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I have to see eclect Eclectic Scribbles, who is on YouTube that I follow also does claw machine i think theirs is like a little it's probably more expensive it looks like more heavy duty so i might see what they charge and what stuff they put in theirs too because that also would probably take less prep than me trying to do mystery bags. Even though I do love mystery bags because I can put more stuff in mystery bags too. So I can like put stickers in there. I used to do when I had pins and other keychains too. I would do stickers I would do six stickers, one acrylic pen, and one keychain for like $12. And I used to do a notepad for $15, like all that for $15. But I only got notepads like one time. And then I haven't got acrylic pens recently. So then it would just be like keychains and stickers, which is not bad. My keychains I make for it are half and half with a star clasp for $7. Half and half, you mean like, um, ha like co different colors, like one color and one color. I do play until you win as the machine is kind of awkward to use. Yeah, that's what I, I like the idea of play until you win. Cause I do think that that would be more fun because I don't have more fun and like a better way to display them. Cause I don't have a good way a good place to put them because I do have a keychain board, but they excuse you, they wouldn't fit up there with my other keychains. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a call from Lebanon, Kentucky, but I don't think I know anyone there. So they can leave a voicemail if they want me. Okay, yeah, so like you make the bottom white or in a color. I had 16 mystery bags and sold all of them in one day. That's awesome! I do love mystery bags. I don't know, I'll see how much claw machines looking on Amazon. Because I do want to order those black pom-poms too. 
And I've been wanting one for a while, but I was like, I don't know what to put in there. And I guess I could do, like, I, $7 is a pretty good price. Because even though you play until you win, you might not get what you want. Because you might accidentally grab something else. Um, but I could still do the deal where if they do really want a different keychain, they could just buy it for $12 or do the two for 10 type deal. And I mean, claw machines are good in gotcha ponds to keep people coming back to your table, but also have a group, a, like a group at your table or like a line at your table, but also, oh, but also it could be a problem where if you have too many people like wanting to do the claw machine and then you get a line and it's like backed up. But I see you also put you put a, you did say that you put them in eggs. Hey, Easter Easter stuff is on sale, ninety percent off. I think I think this would fit in an Easter egg. It might have to. I don't know if it would fit the little ones, and it might the ears might have to tuck. But I think it could fit. So yeah, I have 300 eggs and I regret it. That, yeah, that seems like a lot. I could maybe borrow some from my sister too. Cause I did just buy some for her <laughs> uh, when uh, I had to grab some for my niece. She was at daycare and she forgot to take her Easter basket with Easter eggs and they were doing an Easter egg hunt. And I know some of the claw machines come with the, the little capsules or I mean I guess gotcha ponds maybe claw machines don't come with the capsule but I, mean, I guess it depends yes um I probably won't put it on the little one but for the big one I do want to put um a tail and like the uh, my melody I think has a, a bunny tail right it's a little poof ball I want to get a little poof ball to go on there. And like this one's the one that has the little poof balls on there. But the little one, just because I want to keep the price low, I'm not going to add too much to it. Same with my little Lethal Company guy. He usually has his air tanks on the back. Looks like a scuba tanks. Um, he's not going to get that either, just because that would, I would have to start charging more if I did that. But yes, thank you for reminding me. I was going to make an embroidery file for the tail as well. Oh, there goes a nail. Oh, this is when I know my acrylic nails are getting too long. It chipped it and just like flung it off because it's getting too close. Too close to the presser foot. I went bowling and you know how you did I already say that like where you put your fingers in the ball all three of these nails came off so I repainted them but you can see that they they're not they're not the right length the other ones are but these are these are past their time they have overstayed their welcome Scares me every time though. Like, I don't know why is it gotta be so aggressive? 
So now I need to repaint this one <laughs> so it doesn't look so bad. So this convention, the Omnicon one, um, or Pop Culture Fest is also what it's called. We're gonna be on like lunch tables. And they're they're not gonna have like the benches, which is what I think of when I think of lunch tables. Like the old school lunch tables, but they did say it will have a crack in the middle, like a seam down the middle of the table, I assume, where they like fold up. So I might either double up on my tablecloths so that that doesn't, that hole isn't a problem or might bring like some boards or not boards, but uh, I don't know if I can find a piece of cardboard to lay across. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. But what I was going to say with lunch tables is usually we work on like two, two to two and a half foot wide table you know the lunch tables has got to be wider than that. Um, and I did email them back and ask, like, you know, how big are the lunch tables and, you know, how much space are we going to have behind them? But they only emailed me back with the length of the table, which I assumed already was going to be either six foot or eight foot, but I was leaning towards eight foot because, again, it's a lunch table. But they didn't send me the width. But I'm thinking at least four foot wide for how wide the table is. Uh, Cause if you're thinking about people have lunch trays and you don't wanna like cram them in. So that would be nice for the claw machine, but for my other conventions, I might not have that space. And then they did say the space behind us I think maybe at least eight foot and they said maybe you could you know also talk to your neighbors and if they're okay with it you guys can share like space so I'll see but I'm probably gonna bring my grid walls just to have on hand and then I'll scout it out and see how I'm feeling And we did get the map. And I'm... I'm in the back, kind of facing... Well, no, I'm not facing a wall. I'm facing... Um, some kind of photography thing. I don't... I guess it's like a... Maybe a cosplay photography place where you can come and get your pictures taken and then decide if you want them type thing. I'm gonna have to order some more labels soon. We're running low. All those link hats I made. <laughs> I get to change my last name on my business cards, too. I changed them on the labels, but I haven't ran out of business cards since I have got married, so we can update the business card. Yeah, Joey was like, you can have Robbie Damon sign your cookbook. And I was like, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. That's why I wanted to meet him again. But it's not gonna happen now. He's not gonna be there. He does do a lot of conventions, so. Shouldn't be a problem to meet him again.
I was just really looking forward to him finding my cookbook. I haven't even paid attention to who else is going to be there. And that's at the uh, Smoky Mountain anime. That's the, yeah. The one at the bottom of the list. Or the one at the bottom of the stream list. Did I cut the... Yeah. I'm gonna try to cut the little ears off. The inside of it. The other reason that my nail gets caught up under here is because like I push the fabric through too because it's like pretty thick and my nail just slides under the presser foot because it's like skinny so it just slides under there All right, now it's time to sew the pieces together. And then after I sew these together, I might try to see if I can set the camera up where it's looking at the embroidery machine. And uh, work on some embroidery until like five, or if I want to get off before then, but. I think we could go till five. That's like an hour, we'll say an hour and a half. And usually when I start embroidery designing, I lose track of time, so it goes by really fast. I don't think I have any Sylveon hats made. Um, but someone did order one on my Etsy, so I will probably make one, take it to the convention, or two, take it to the convention and see if it sells, that way, if it doesn't, I already have one made. And then if it does, I just have to remake it.
trying to move these ears out of the way. They're like bunching up. How much are we thinking a claw machine is on eBay? Or not eBay. <laughs> Amazon. I think I looked at one on Amazon before. Like, I had it in my cart. And I want to say it was like $30-ish. Maybe higher, 40. But then I read the reviews on it and I was like, I don't know. Like second guessing myself. And I don't know if I'd be able to bring it to every convention, but these next two, maybe next three wouldn't be bad to have because it is going to be more kids and teen age because the Danville Comic Con I think kids get in free to that one and then I mean this this college one is free for everyone I think Ridley's barking. Yeah, I hear you barking. Don't be barking. Where the puddles chilling? Just looking at me. He wants to jump into my lap. What? You're gonna get your head stuck. You can't crawl that way. Uh oh, here comes Obi. Ridley got a little haircut on his chest. Can you guys tell? It's not like as long. It's longer down there at his belly. But yeah, there you go. In your neck, you got a little trim. Hmm? I got a little trim. You can't get up here. Baby. Kisses. I'll take the kisses. Nope, nope, nope. That's it. Did you guys see Daisy? Not attacking Obi, but like hurting him to make sure that he doesn't <laughs> attack Ridley. Belly down. Belly down. Go. Both of you. Do 
need to go in the crate? Okay. <laughs> Such a distinguished boy he is. And uh, go over this again one more time. I also think I need to upgrade my sewing machine soon because I need to get one that goes through thicker fabrics better and that will actually like pull the fabric along where I don't have to push it but I also need it because when I was doing those blitz hats I was going through so many layers doing a zigzag stitch and it didn't catch for some of them and I had to go over it multiple times okay so we'll put the Totoro hats aside but if you guys are curious this is how it goes on the little leaf goes on its head and then I have the eyes that'll go and a nose and then he gets little whiskers so now we'll go we'll switch gears because i really want to work on more keychains uh, but before i do that i want to look how much a uh, claw machine is i think singer makes a good industrial style machine style machine is it like is it this size or like the costume shop size but not like in the big industrial one because i'd be okay with that i don't want like the huge industrial one that we used to have in the costume shop Okay, this claw machine is 37. This other one that has like the same review score, 42. 36, about the same. This one, limited time deal for 30, but it only has 300 reviews, where the other ones were like 3,000. They're all like four out of five stars. This one's 30. It looks very small though. And it also only has like 300 reviews. Thank you, Bethany. Bethany just sent me a link for a sewing machine. <laughs> oh, for a couple sewing machines. So this one comes with eggs. This one also has USB. <laughs> Which means, like, I know the other ones I think were, like, battery powered. Which I guess I could plug it in to, like, my charging box. But I think I would rather have one that takes batteries. Yeah, this one takes batteries. And you get little tokens. And I think this is the one that I was looking at getting before. But I, like, read the reviews and I watched the video. I might get it. Mm -hmm. 
So the the reviews are fun, is good. Um, quality, volume, maneuverability, and volume control are all like mid. This person says no volume control. <laughs> Very loud. And this person said they muffled the sound. Also, I'm sure you could go in and cut the sound cord somewhere, but... Can't lower the volume. Okie dokie. I'll keep an eye out on that. Let me... Mm -hmm. Got to go. I found a shelf by the trash and now I must reorganize everything. Uh, bye frogs. Happy organizing. Oh no, that was uh, for the price for the claw machine. I was looking at you can get a foam mat and it will help muffle the loudness of the machine itself, but I don't know about the digital sounds. Gotcha. Yeah, it says I play circus music, uh, but I'm thinking like, what if I just stab things into the speaker holes? <laughs> All right, so let's see. <laughs> gotcha. I'm sure the foam mat, though, would work for the claw machine, too. Yeah, I'm talking about all kinds of machines. I want all the machines. Okay, so I'm thinking... Work on this embroidery file... But to do that, I need to move some things. And uh, so you guys don't get seasick, I'm going to turn that off for a minute. Or actually, just kidding. Turn it back on. But I'll put it on the be right back screen so that I could still kind of see. That's just gonna have you guys look at the side of the machine. How do I make it? How do I make you look at the front of the machine? This is honestly why I haven't done this before because I'm like, I don't know how I want to set it up. We'll take this webcam off and we'll put it over here. And we'll probably have to put it on a stand still. Get the tripod out. Uh, 
And then I just gotta try to make sure that this is where I'm not gonna, like, hit it. Okay, let me see what that's looking like. pretty good just hope that this doesn't slide down and then let's see if I can show you guys hatching border -y. the only thing is it's gonna take up the whole screen so it's like in the background gonna be a lot going on because then we can also do my face oh hello but I actually wanted that one to stay this one hello it is me Wait, why did it switch? You stay there. Oh, it's because they're named the same thing. Hold on, hold on. Silly. do all this and then watch me only be live for like 10 more minutes <laughs> i hope to be live longer than that but oh. and now i'm really gonna make an iced coffee okay bring that down Screen capture can come down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna make an iced coffee, but I will be back and I'm gonna still talk to you guys, so don't worry. I'll be here. I don't know if I wanna put my iced coffee in this cup. That seems that seems like mold growth waiting to happen. Also, I should change out my my mic while I'm thinking about it, cause uh, then I don't have to worry about it going dead. So I'm doing Starbucks. This was big on TikTok, like a couple of years ago. But I'm doing this Starbucks like iced coffee that comes in the big jug with the like protein shake. I'm doing that. This is this one before. And honestly, I usually just do half. But it's 15 grams of protein and then just one gram of sugar. One one gram of sugar. Mm, I actually really like it by itself. I used to, I, so I'm not a big breakfast person. And I used to drink the K drinks like every morning in high school. And that's what this reminds me of. Because I'd always get the special K chocolate.
And then I poured a little bit of this coffee in there. Which also doesn't have sugar. So this is a lot healthier for me than my usual coffee, because if I'm drinking regular coffee, it's got loads of creamer and sometimes a pump of the caramel syrup. And then not to mention if I put like whipped cream and stuff on top. <laughs> Which the dogs love whipped cream. So, you know, I'm doing it for them. Mm. Probably shouldn't be using a straw with the mic. I'm not trying to annoy you guys. No, I just poured it on myself. Shirt. Oh good, it's coming off. We're fine, we're fine. Sorry for the scratchy noises. Somebody remind me to get a lanyard at this convention this weekend. Because <laughs> I want one to wear... with my mic. I could turn this into a dog toy. So this is my first attempt at Karomi and I didn't have stabilizer under the face and so it kind of just dragged the eye and it didn't stitch. It just stitched in that one spot. And then I also, Daisy, go. <laughs> Hit the camera. I also didn't trim the black um, close. I just kind of like kind of trimmed it and then so when these little pink spots stitched out I couldn't trim around it anymore so you know this is trial and error but I do have the my melody one already sent to myself in the google drive so I'm gonna upload that we're going to open up a new new blink design. And then I don't think I saved the artwork yet. Download. I'm gonna go up here to artwork. And work on my melody. Look how cute. And then I bet that there's, I, I think I've said this before, I could take this base pattern and move it over and maybe just cut and tweak it. But honestly, I think it would just be more trouble than if I just redo this part where I'm gonna like digitize a close shape and I go around here and I do my curves and straight lines. So I'm just gonna trace around his legs. And honestly, I'm just mostly doing curves for all this. I'm going to do a point here. Go back to my curves. Guys, stop hitting the camera. I know it's not like recording anything right now, but it's going to make people sick. Someone favorited my shop on Etsy. So I'm going to... Put, stop, and they go. Hit my, you're gonna make me spill one drink. I'm putting straight arrows in the crevices. And then pretty much everything else is getting curves. 
And that might mean nothing to you all, but basically you can have different nodes is what they're called. And you can make them um, either like the square is like a straight, like right angle. And then the circle is like a curve. So that's going to help when I'm trying to curve and like match up the lines better. But I did accidentally do a closed shape and excuse me, that was supposed to be an open shape because we want to leave a hole so that it will be able to get stuck. So I used the knife tool to break it apart right there on the leg and I'm going to delete this piece. And so now if we go back and look at our reshape, you can see there's a hole here. And that is going to be what it stitches last. Um, and that's going to leave our hole so we're, we can stuff him and turn it inside out. And they don't all have to be tweaked or moved. This is probably where I should have put a straight, like a, a square, but I didn't. So I think it'll be fine though. And just kind of making sure its legs are going to kind of be the same height. Let's see how close this one is to this line, this grid line. It's kind of what I go off of. It's not going to be that crazy of a difference. And then I also like to check here that this armpit is kind of the same. And this one kind of needs to go up higher and then also like it's possible to open it up a little more. Because we want to trim our corners. Oops. And if I accidentally click and don't like drag, it adds a node there, which is nice. It's a really good, like if I need to add one, that's a really easy way to add it. But I accidentally add it a lot of times when I don't need to. All right, just checking out the rest of these lines. I like, I really like doing embroidery on lives because I just feel like I talk to you guys more too, even if it's just like nonsense about embroidery. And <laughs> But I, I guess because this really makes me have to think where when I'm sewing my hats and stuff, I've done it so much that I do not, like I can be thinking about anything else. But doing this, I kind of actually have to focus and I have to think like what layer is gonna go where. So that actually gives me something to talk about and talk through. Where when I'm sewing, it's literally like, all right, I'm gonna put these two pieces together and we're gonna pin them and we're gonna sew them. But, um, making the hats is nice for, like if I need to tell a story or something and then in that scenario, I don't have to think about what I'm saying. That wasn't like shaping the way that I wanted to so move that. And because this is going to be so like small, like it's not going to be humongous. Those, some of those corners don't really matter. Like those little bitty places, the fabric's going to like budge that way anyways. So if it, as long as it's not a drastic curve where it doesn't need to be, it'll be okay. All right, and then that's gonna be the outline. 
of my melody. So this is what's gonna stitch last. It's gonna stitch the whole thing closed. That way we can turn it inside out. Which we will move all those layers around when we get there. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the pink part, which is kinda gonna be about the same. Trying to think how I want to um, stitch this out because it's going to be a closed shape. And I'm just going to start here and go around the collar. And then we're going to go here. I think we're just going to have to backtrack at some point. So we'll just go this way. Okay, but it doesn't have to stitch all the way around. Which is what I did on Karomi, and that doesn't need to happen. So let me restart this. So the reason I say that is I was about to have it where it stitched all the way around like the bunny ears again, which is what I had to do on Karomi. But that doesn't need to happen because the outline is going to stitch around that anyways. So the main point that I need this to stitch is the collar and the face part. Because I'm going to go in here and I'm going to trim these edges so that the face can embroider and open this up and the collar is going to embroider. But the rest of the pink can, can kind of just stay there as long as I make sure it's laying flat when the whole outline gets stitched out. So we'll do this this way that I'm thinking now, and then we'll change room later. All right, back to digitized clothes shape, and we're gonna do around the collar again, but this time we're gonna go up here around the face. And come to a point and come out for the collar and then I like ooh, sorry I yelled at the dogs for not hitting it I like that Karomi has this little layer that separates the collar from like the hood So I think I am going to go, we're going to go here and then we're going to go back up and we're going to come like around this way. I don't know if that's going to mess it up. That might be a weird stitch out, so we'll see how it looks. Yeah, I want to do this to be a square. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Now, if there was just a way to delete nodes, there probably is, but I haven't found it. So I just kind of keep moving them because it doesn't necessarily matter when it's getting stitched out. I think it can add more time to your stitches. And then we're going to shape up the little head hole. And my drawing wasn't completely like centered so I'm trying to eyeball it but of course it's hard when the reference photo 
is not the reference photo anymore. Just kind of making my own reference photo. Okay, we'll see how that looks when I take it away. Take it away. And so that's going to stitch the pink down. So we're going to say the bunny is going to stitch in. I don't like to do white because it doesn't show up well on my machine. So we're going to do gray. This is going to be pink. And then we're going to move on to the eyes, which are pretty simple. Um, we're just going to click the circle and then we can make it an oval. So we just do that. We're going to fill. This is going to be black and then we need to rotate it. Because it's not the correct direction. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks right. And then I can duplicate this, move the other one over here. And I will want to make sure that these are even, which I can look at up here. The height for this one is 286 and this one, oh my gosh, we did it. I didn't even have to move it actually. I eyeballed it correctly. And I'm going to duplicate it again, but this time this is going to end up being the nose. One more, and then I'm going to shrink it. Oh shoot, I should, okay. I'm going to switch out to my mic. Hello! We're good to go. Now I don't have to stress about my mic shutting off. Kind of making sure that's centered between the eyes. And then we are also going to stitch the mouth. And so for what I did for Kuromi, I did show you this triple stitch, Ridley. But it didn't turn out right i did it on the little keychain which since it's on the little keychain you can't really tell but it smiles kind of like crooked actually it might be better to show you on this well i can't even tell because i'm not looking at the right screen okay see the smile kind of came out a little crooked um i'm not sure if that's just because the, the thread got pulled when I took like the interfacing off or if it's when I did the stitching that triple stitch which is what I did it like messed it up no. so I didn't love triple stitch but also I just don't feel like satin stitch is right My melody has a pink or a yellow nose, so I'm going to change that to yellow. I knew something wasn't right. I was like, I know it's face is not all black. Excuse me, I need you to move. I don't think I want to do satin stitch because that is like too much. So I think I'm going to try a back stitch on this. But I need something to be a little bit thicker than this because it kind of just fades into the fabric. Now I'm going to take away my drawing because it's making it kind of look lopsided. And I need to look at this a little closer because we know the eyes are on the same level. And 
but you can see this one looks further away from the pink foot. I'm gonna expand this up a little bit. That looking. Okay, that looks better. And then the width should be a little bit better. And honestly, this could be tweaked a little bit, but I think if I tweak that, then that's gonna tweak all of this. If I can move this up a little bit. because that's too much of a slant in the collar there. But I'm also looking in like, you know, this isn't centered. I wanna move my grid. shift to see if you can see that default okay vertical scroll is all horizontal scroll okay what about like oh what I can show hoop templates that's cool this is actually handy But what I am gonna do to make this easier is I'm gonna highlight this all and then we're just gonna like try to center it on the line. There we go. So that this grid line is kind of going straight down the middle and I have a better idea of where the middle point is. Like I can move this legs over a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that will do. And then the mouth and the nose actually look pretty good. And maybe this eye could go over a little bit. So this will be X. Nope, that's the wrong way. So we'll do. Too far. Okay. We're working with small numbers here. I should I should the mouth actually I didn't even see which way to move. I don't think that was the right way. And the only thing would be, you see how this collar piece is close to here? But if I bring this collar piece closer to here, that's gonna make this side super duper long. And it's because this arm is like wider. So to fix that, I kind of need to like widen this out. And that might be okay. I'm gonna 
tentunya ini and this goes somewhere over here and so that's the finish I don't know about this one, it doesn't even look right. Ridley, I'm fine. Thank you. Ridley, go. Go. But you thought that was sad. No, you don't need anything. I like that I'm gonna move this back a little more because I just I still don't love the way that this collar looks. And I know whoop, I know it's this angle. Like is that a little better? That's a little better. Look at this cute thing. All right, now we can put this in the correct order, which is gonna be this full bunny is gonna be at the bottom. And so it's gonna, we're gonna put down white fabric and then we're gonna lay pink fabric over the top. It's gonna stitch out the little collar and the top of the hood in pink. And then we'll do black, black, black mouth. And then it'll do yellow nose. And then we will do the whole outline in white, but I have it set to gray so that it will show up on my machine. And now that we feel good about that, I'm gonna check the dimensions and we want it to be as big as it can go on my machine, which is 6.9. So that's a five by seven hoop and the height can go up to 6.9. It's actually probably like 6.999, but that is fine. And we're going to save as I'm just going to call it melody and then I have to get my flash drive just a little bit and then while this is saving I'm gonna get a hoop ready Hoopla. save that onto the flash drive and again I'm using a 5 by 7 hoop on like when we sleep and now it's really cold even though it's like it's supposed to get up to 80s today What do you guys think? Should I use? I have a hot pink color. Hmm. 
Um, and then I have like a baby pink color. But I did find this other pink, I forgot. In the closet. That actually might be the best color pink. I actually got these from, this for my Axolotl Crim. Because he's a red color, but this is like, he's like a pinky red. But I think, what do you, do you think this color would look nice? I guess I could have shown you over there too. Otherwise, it's this really hot pink color or this really pastel pink. But based off pictures, I'm thinking the middle one. Let me look one more time. I mean, they have her. In all different shades, they even have it in red. So I think whatever color I do, be fine. So yeah, I'm gonna do this middle color because I don't I don't use it a lot, so So I put the white in the hoop and I had to get a pretty big piece of white so that it'll fit in the whole 5x7 hoop. Let's go ahead and put this. And I'm going to stitch this in white thread, honestly, until I get to... until I get to the yellow or well the black of course but the black and yellow I need more USB ports. I don't have enough. So I have to like unplug my mouse to plug in my USB. If I had both cameras set up, I wouldn't be able to plug in my mouse at all and I'd have to unplug the camera to even do embroidery files. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. And I am going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And then I think I'm going to move this down just a little bit. So I'm going to stitch this in white thread. I don't think it's going to show up that much. And if I, the less times I have to change my threads, the better. So it just stitched out that. And now I need to trim the face part open so that can stitch the face and I gotta make sure that I don't cut the white underneath so I just cut like a little hole to get my scissors in there 
and then I'm going to stitch around the outside of the stitching it just did. I'm not going to stitch, or I'm not going to cut open the collar because I want that to stay. And this is just going to make it where it looks like it's wearing a hoodie. And then I could trim this up more after it's out of the hoop, but there's what it looks like. I'll show it on this one because it the camera's a little bit better. But I just cut that open. And now it's gonna stitch black. So I need to change the thread to black. And I also this is gonna be the only bad thing about this can right in here is I'm gonna change the thread because I can't. You guys are gonna see like my arm fit probably. Or I'm gonna just punch the camera. All right, for this though, I have to use some inner facing or some uh, stabilizer otherwise it won't stitch out this eye like clean because it'll get stuck on the uh, fabric so I'm gonna pin down this side I'm gonna try to make sure I get down to the white too and then I'm going to pull it the opposite direction, like this way. Um, that way it doesn't pull the fabric. If this stabilizer wasn't here, it might pull the fabric that's underneath and um, like stitch in the one spot. That's what was happening to that first one that I showed you guys for the Karomi. stitch the mouth and then I probably don't need to hold this right now because it already did like its stitch but I do need to try to keep it flat for the mouth well back stitch looks okay I don't love it Maybe I do need to do the satin stripe color though. Just to see what I like it better. See what looks better. Where is this? Oh, this is the first part. Okay, so now we're gonna switch it to yellow thread. I don't have to pull that stabilizer really because it's already kind of held in place. I 
I'll get you guys any closer. I don't know if you're gonna move. There's a shan. So now I'm gonna take this off because I'm gonna remove the stabilizer. And this is tearaway. I pretty much only use tearaway. And that's literally what you do. You just tear away. And what I should have done while I was cleaning up around the face is I should have trimmed the collar too. So that's what I'm going to do. And then this next stitch is going to be the whole body. So we're almost done with the sewing part. But of course then we have to stitch it. Or I mean stuff it. And then stitch it up. And I have to be really careful doing this because I do not want to um, push it out of the hoop. Because then I would have to like hand, or not hand sew it, but like machine sew it on my sewing machine. I'd have to like hand draw where the stitches would go. Because I would not be able to get it back in the hoop perfectly. Oh, and the other thing I like to do with this, which is what I do for my Lethal Company guys, and I did it for Karomi too, is I take a piece of this color, like this pink, and I'm going to sew it on the white. And then I'm going to lay it flat down. That way it's going to have, on the back of the plush, it's going to have that little, it's going to still look like a hood. So if I just put a piece of white fabric over this, this, the back part wouldn't be there. It would be solid white. So this is how I make it where it at least has the hood. You can tell it doesn't have the little collar. I could try to do that, but it would take a whole lot of time because I would either have to stitch out another embroidery where it's just this and the little collar, or I would have to like hand or machine sew on the collar and then try to get it lined up, which would be kind of hard. So, and if we're gonna, we wanna try to keep these plushies um, cheaper in like the, 20 below category, then we're gonna not as put as much detail into them. Okay, so I need to take the color. I was gonna show you guys that Ridley's dead over here, but he moved and you can't see it anyways on the screen. So I have a pink and a white piece and I'm just gonna layer this over the white just a little bit with the pink on top and I'm gonna sew it. And this is gonna create the little hood in the back. <sighs> Get more than my scissors. All right, so I just do this, it's a simple stitch, and then I am going to trim this um, overlay back here in the back because my machine does kind of get caught on it, the presser foot can get wrapped up in it. So that just helps. 
avoid that problem. And then we're gonna lay this over. I meant to do this before. I'll put it back in the hoop. We're gonna lay the pink on top. And we're gonna line it up with the like collar part. As close as we can, that way it looks like it's going all the way around. Oh, I laid that the wrong way. This way. And then we can put it back on the hoo. Oh no. It's hard when I have this extra fabric sitting out. Hi, um, welcome back, and Anid, what's, what would you like me, you to go by, Anid? Um, good morning, I'm late again, oh well, it's only 5 a.m. here, oh my gosh, welcome Chinky, is that how you say that as well? Yep, and it is fine, I didn't think it would still be on, yeah, I'm trying to go at least till 5 my time. So we got another like hour-ish, um, a little under an hour. I did think about stopping, but then I was like, no, I really wanna do um, this embroidery. So we're working on the My Melody. We're getting ready to see how it looks all stitched out. I'm literally going to sleep. It is 11 p.m. Oh my goodness. You guys are on like completely opposite time zones. I got my extra coffee drink of the day. A little protein drink with coffee in it. Yeah, it is four here. Four twenty actually. Haha. <laughs> what is this gonna be? So this is gonna be my melody from the like the Hello Kitty friends. Sanrio characters, I think is what they call it. Sanrio, Sanrio. I think it's more Sanrio. Sanrio. Maybe we put more emphasis. So this is one of them. This is, I, I showed this one earlier. This is Kuromi. Also have it in the little keychain. So this is going to be the little bunny looking one. And I'm going to cut it out right now. Cut it out. <laughs> And we're gonna see what it looks like. This is the first look. First time I've done this plush. Kind of the same basis of the other one though, so. It should come out fine unless I did something completely wrong. Love the keychain version. Thank you, I am obsessed. Like I have this list of all the other stuff I wanna do for this convention this weekend and now it is all like just turned into making keychains. And I mean, I feel like keychains is just the generic thing people would call it, but I do think backpack clips would be good too. I can't wait, like, I, I don't even know what I want to put on mine. I have an Umbreon, like, lounge fly, so it would be cute if I made a little Umbreon one, but when I say I feel like my table's about to turn into just a big keychain display, like, <laughs> we might have problems. I might have to rethink my whole, 
display. But frogs that was in here earlier suggested a claw machine or doing like mystery bags. And I really like the idea of both. But the one that might be more probable for this weekend is a claw machine. And they put their keychains inside an Easter egg. And then it's like a mystery still, but it's in a claw machine. So you get to play and then you get like the mystery. Hi, Angel. Umbreon is my favorite evolution. I do like Umbreon. That's why I have a backpack. But I, my favorite is Vaporeon because I do like water types and um, ice types. So Glaceon is like a good second. I would say maybe Umbreon and Glaceon are tied, but I do really like blue, like the color blue. So I think Glaceon has a little step up. Like if they had a Vaporeon lounge fly, they might now, but when I got this backpack, my, my husband got it for me. Uh, last year, they didn't have a Vaporeon one yet, so I got Umbreon instead. What are you making? I'm making uh, My Melody, and we already have Kuromi Little Plush and also Keychain Form. So I'm about to turn this inside out, and we can get the final look. Claw Machine is a fun idea. I still have a pending order for a crocheted Kuromi keychain charm. I'm putting it on hold indefinitely because it's like twice the work of the other Sanrio. I uh, can't charge a different price. Uh, I understand that like uh, for my Evolution hats that I do, Sylveon, um, it doesn't take as long now because I found um, a way that I could use my embroidery machine to help me not have to do as much work on like the bows and stuff that Sylveon has but uh Sylveon takes so much more time than the other evolutions that I make but I don't charge more I used to I used to charge like they used to be 40 and then like evolution or Sylveon and Umbreon was uh 45 but then I decided just to do a base price and uh, we did 50 and then I also don't charge tax at my in-person convention. Um, I kind of just do tax overall. So tax is like included already in the price of my products. Okay, so this is the only problem is the hole needs to be bigger so that I can turn this inside out. Angel said, so cute. I need that. Thank you. I do hope to have them on my shop soon. Okay. Might have to clip this a little more. There we go. Look at her. Here she comes. Here she comes out of this hatching. She's becoming one. <laughs> Turning inside out is always hard. Yeah, it is honestly for anything. It is the worst. And I was trying to turn inside out the little Kuromi. And I I thought I jammed my thumb. Like I thought my thumb was stuck in one position. And I was like, ooh, I'm not gonna be able to do that often. Or I'll just have to like make the hole bigger. Because that was that was too much work. I'm, I'm gonna get arthritis, which I'm probably gonna get arthritis anyways. So I need to like do whatever I can to prevent it. Look at her! Now we can skip it. I'm learning how to crochet, but it's hard because the yarn is trash. Oh no, what kind of yarn are you using? I do know some of them, like, I don't know a lot about crochet, but I do know some of them definitely better. And I, I think starting out using the kind that 
isn't big and fluffy is easier. Like you want to use the ones that's like, it's going to make tighter knots. That way you can see your chains. But uh, again, I, I've tried to crochet, but I'm not, I'm not a crochet artist. Definitely check out Once Upon a Spark for that. She's helpful. So many people crochet here. Yeah, I, I want to get into crochet, but I don't need another hobby that I might turn into a job. <laughs> I, if I did it, I want to make sure that I do it for fun. But again, it's a lot. It's really strenuous on your hands and I need like even gaming after I've been working all day is rough on my hands. I don't I need a job or I need a hobby that kind of doesn't involve my hands. So like soccer, that would be cool. <laughs> you can't use your hands except for throwing in the ball. I got a kit from Amazon and it was rated 4.7 stars. So I don't know. Was it one of those um, wobbles? Is that what it's called? Woobles? I've been wanting to do one of those. I think it would be fun. But it's not like yarn that you use in that kit. You use like, it looks like parachute cord. You know how people used to make those parachute bracelets or paracord bracelets? That's what it looks like. Which I would think would be easier because it doesn't unravel. <laughs> yes, Bethany, the hands. Whatever we can to save the hands. Because, you know, some people take up, like, cooking as a hobby or gardening. Still, that's rough on your hands. I got blisters from working out in our garden. Um, we were trimming back the, like, hedges. I got blisters. And I got burn from cooking. It's it's very healed now. Um, if you guys saw it before, it I got a second degree burn up my arm because I spilt hot grease. So like cooking wasn't good. <laughs> that was not my first time cooking. That literally just happened cooking dinner. I wasn't like doing it for fun. <laughs> it was a knit with like crochet tools and yarn. It wasn't like a specific design. Oh, okay. Kind of gave up on saving my hands, all my hobbies, and even my study is hard on them oh like like studying yeah i mean i'm trying to think honestly of hobbies that don't really involve your hands and i can't maybe if i started doing vr but again like the way you kind of have to hold the controller i do like dance workouts i like doing that as like a hobby but also kind of a workout a fun workout that doesn't really involve strenuous hands but like if i want to do weightlifting, that's hard on your hands <laughs> so yeah honestly guys it's looking like soccer which i do love soccer i haven't got to play it since i was very very young our high school didn't have a soccer team so i did volleyball which I do like. I like that too. <gasps> Look at her! Um, I think I looked it up and I do believe it is her pronouns. She, her. Um, and then I think, is it correct that Karomi also is she, her? And then Hello Kitty is she, her too. Do I make a Hello Kitty plush? Like, I feel like there's so many Hello Kitty plushes, you know? Reading isn't hard on your hands. I do. I like reading, but I do really love audiobooks so I can do more stuff while I'm listening to an audiobook. So I usually read while sewing. <laughs> but I don't mind the idea of reading. Okay, so the other problem with reading is if I read as a hobby, um, I will fall asleep. Because I'm very bad. I'm even like watching TV. If it's after the work day. I'm going to fall asleep. It's 
So that's why I do video games, which at least keep me a little attentive and depending on how my hands are feeling, it might just be simple TFT, maybe chill Minecraft. Definitely not DVD if I my hands are hurting. I used to do photography too, and that's rough on your wrists. Congrats on 1K. Thank you, Angel. I'm so excited. We did it. We did it. We did it. Anyways, I might go to sleep now. I fall asleep with audiobooks. Anyways, I might go to sleep now. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Anded. Thanks for coming by. I need to wake up somewhat early. Yeah, I feel that. I literally had to go to the store this morning so that I wouldn't get back in bed. So I was like, all right, going to Walmart, 7 a.m. Didn't end up being 7 a.m. It was, I did wait until like 8, but. So the other thing I wanted to do with my melody is um, a lot of the pictures of her have the little like ear to the side or like folded over. So I did want to like sew it where it's doing that. Bye! But I need to check to see, is it like folded in, or like is it the left or the right? And is it folded to the side and the front? I do know that some of them, sometimes the ears are both down and it looks like it can be the right or the left, so. You know, it depends on if she's taking a selfie or not. <laughs> I am seeing left ear more than any of the other. So that's what we're going to do. And it does kind of look that it's folded over in front. So I'm thinking we do like this. And I'm going to do what's called like a tack stitch. Um, that's what we called it in costuming. I assume that's what everyone else calls it in sewing. But I'm just going to just do a little in and out stitch to hold this down. And it's going to hold it in place. So for costuming, we do this to like hold down like collars or lapels if they're going to be dancing and flipping around. But I mean, we use it on all kinds of different things. If you need to just sew something on a hat, we'll be like, can you just tack down this um, feather? I first learned knitting slash crocheting decades ago while or ago using a kit I bought in the grocery. I believe it was meant for kids, the fonts and all. I can't understand the crochet pattern, so I've been a knitter first. So I've been a knitter first. Nice. I think that's the best way. It's always to do kids. Like especially I've always like wanted to do like learn a language and I think the best way to do that honestly is just to start like if you were in kindergarten for that language there we go so I stitched down its ear it looks a little better in person it kind of looks kind of funny on camera but I mean, I'll get, like, if some people are like, oh, I don't like the ear up, then I can start making them just with both of the ears up. Or I don't like it with the ear down. I could just make it with both of the ears up. So, just trial and error. And I want to give it a little bunny tail. She has a little poof ball. Same with uh, Kurumi. I want to give it little black poof balls. So I need to order some. So now we're going to make a keychain version of this. And to do that, I have to go back into 
hatch embroidery and I need to make it a smaller size. So this is for the five by seven and I'm gonna change the height to three by or 3.9. And then I'm gonna save this, save as, and this is gonna be Melody four by four. And I also need my flash drive. And I'm going to do another potty break real quick. Be back. I'm back. And I got about 20 minutes before Joey will be on his way home. So I hopefully can turn this into a keychain so you guys can see it. Chinky mm, said, did you use your regular machine to sew the plushies? All those curves take a lot of practice. So for this, I actually used my embroidery machine. That's what we're looking at right now over here. Um, I could I could do this on like a regular sewing machine, but I'm practicing doing more embroidery like patterns and stuff. So I'm practicing making and using my embroidery machine more. But yeah, it would definitely take a lot more time on the sewing machine to do these curves and stuff but I'm currently using my embroidery machine. All right, back to the embroidery machine. And again, I need to get a hoop set up for this. socks are all over the place so for the hoop I'm using four by four this time so let me find a piece of white scrap fabric the other good thing about these keychains is I can use scrap fabric which is really nice And then I'm gonna get the pink and we're gonna lay it on top of the white. And I don't need this big of a pink scrap piece, but since I already had it cut, we're gonna use it. Yeah, it's an in-the-hoop pattern. I hope um, to have these for sale at some point. I would love to do just a big Sanrio, um, like, in-the-hoop bundle that you could buy. 
So this is kind of me playing around with that and seeing how it goes. All right, so this is gonna stitch the hood again. But I'm really um, into in the hoop patterns right now and like digitizing stuff. I actually really enjoy it. Ridley, go lay down. You're hitting the camera, but go lay down. Go. Go. Keep going. Thank you. Oh, look how little this is. Okay, so now I have to trim again the little face. I'm going to snip just a little hole. Making sure not to hit the white fabric underneath. And then I'm also going to trim the collar. Last time I waited and trimmed it later, but I'm going to go ahead and trim it now. I think I timed out how long it took me to do the Lethal Company one as like a little keychain. And it took like 10 minutes to stuff, like turn inside out and stuff. And then the stitching itself said it took like three minutes. But that doesn't include the stopping and starting, like, to have to trim pieces like this and change the thread. So, overall, it took about 20 minutes to make these little keychains. Bundle patterns will be a good idea. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I think I'll probably offer them as individual, too, in case people just need the one. But you definitely would get a better deal if you did the bundle. So I'm going to test it out, I think, and see, but there are, how many Sanrio characters are there? Like, I know of at least, like, five, right? And I usually do, my like, in the hoops, I do about $10 each. Um... If it was just like a stitching pattern, it would be five, but for the in the hoops, it'd be 10. So then that would be like five times 10. We're already at 50. Um, but of course I would do, like if it, if it actually was five, I would do like probably for 40, I would get at least 10 off. All right, so I put this stabilizer down so that the eyes come out okay. Because if I didn't have that there, it would pull the fabric and possibly get caught underneath with the bottom. Just to be safe. And then it's gonna do the melt. I still did the back stitch. I didn't change that. But I think it turned out okay. Yeah, it's a little bit darker. So I did two different stitches for the mouth. So for Kurumi, I did just a simple stitch. That's it's like um, a single stitch. But this I did a back stitch. And you can see that this one shows up a little bit darker, which is what I wanted. Hi, Kaya. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to trim these black threads because we're going to switch to yellow. And I just want to make sure this black doesn't get 
in the yellow shred because you would be able to see see it. All right, now let's switch yellow thread. I think technically this has more red switches too than Kuromi. I'm not sure. It might be about the same. And I can take this pin out because that's already going to stay in one spot. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to pull this stabilizer away. See, this kind of did the same thing. That the other one did, which is make it like pushes the mouth up to the nose. I think I can like budge it down. But it's just because these stitches are so small. There's not a lot I can do about that. now oh before i put that on there i have to do the thing again where we we sew on the pink to the white to give it the back of the hood um do i have i thought i had some extra pieces i don't think i have a big enough piece so no but i can use this Yes, my scissors. I keep using this other bin for a trash can and it's not a trash can. Got ten minutes. Technically, if I like I said, if this took me eight to do Kuromi, I should be able to get this done before Joey calls me. But I don't think I'll be able to get it done and close out the vlog. But he does go through a um a bad service area usually like 10 minutes into the drive so maybe I'll tell him I'll maybe I'll tell him to call me after he goes through the bad service area all right so now what I do is lay this on top of the hoop I make sure it's not crooked. So like that. And then that way it it has a little hood thing like this, like in the back. It's not just a white back to the plug. I don't want pink, I want white. And so I have, for the little keychains, I have that darker pink I used for Kuromi. 
but I also think have a lighter pink color and i think the lighter pink would look the best with this but i'll have you guys look and see too Right, it's stitched out. See, that's what it looks like, and then if you're curious, what the insides look like. And then we're just gonna cut the excess off, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna really trim it up. Watch live sports. If you no, no ads. With YouTube TV. Excuse me while I focus cutting. You would think like making smaller things would be easier, right? Would be cheaper. But anyone that has ever made smaller things knows that's not the case. Like maybe you use less fabric, but that's about it. Because working smaller requires more smaller details, requires you requires you having to pay attention more, like especially clipping these corners. You have to be very careful not to get too close and like cut off a leg. But working smaller too doesn't always mean that you can sell it for less. So like that's the downside. I think that's why you don't see a whole lot of like keychains like this unless it's um, mass produced. And the only reason I'm able to sell this for like what, what I was thinking, which is like 10, $12 is because I'm able to do it on my embroidery machine. So I don't have to really stress about those little details the machine's gonna do the hard part okay so look at this little hole you see this little hole this is so tiny that is not even half an inch so i am gonna open it up a little more but i need to remember to edit my embroidery pattern for that because it's way too small all right, and it's got these little bitty ears. I didn't think about that. On Karomi, I kind of made the opening of the ears a little wider. Oof, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a wee bit difficult. Okay, we got the head. And the arms and the feet. That was easier to turn than the other one because I than the bigger one because I opened up the hole more. But I need to see if these bunny ears are gonna turn inside out. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Kind of move them around, make sure they're all nice and fluffed. Hmm? Look at her! She's so little. Reminds me a little bit of the calico like critters. Okay. Let me stuff the leg. Or well, let me stuff her and then we can throw a keychain on her. 
Oh my gosh, stuffing a little thing too, like a little plushie. Have you guys ever stuffed a little plushie? It's also very difficult. Um, but I have these little stuffing sticks. Very handy. And I kind of just grab a small piece and just constantly, like, a little bit at a time, push it in there. And then it kind of works its way into a ball. But you don't want it, like, you don't want it a straight up round ball. Because then that's going to cause you problems when you're trying to, like, push all your stuffing together. Calico critters, yes. I think that's what this reminds me of. I guess because they're so little, and maybe just because this one has a little hat, and they wear like little bonnets. I think something to tell you about later. Okay, looking forward to it. I'm working as fast as I can. So it's almost five, but I'm gonna stay hopefully till 5.10 is the plan. I just love how squishy they get when the stuffing is in there too. What if I made him like a little hairpin? <laughs> Just maybe make their heads little hair charms. Right, we're almost halfway done on the stuffing. Maybe over halfway because these parts are smaller. Like the arms and the feet. Legs. Would this be a cool, like, TikTok, like, time lapse where it's like, how fast can I make this? And then how fast does it actually take me if I, you know, because I have to focus, like, for it to come out good. And it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like time lapse it. This makes me think like maybe I would be good. <gasps> Hello, hi me, welcome. Yeah, I've got like 10 more minutes until my husband is off work. Um, but I'm, I want to get this, my Melody keychain. It's almost done. So I'm almost done stuffing and I'm gonna sew it up and then add the keychain and then we are there.
Okay, it might need a little bit more stuffing, but its leg is like cut wide open. So I have to sew it up first. And then you guys help me decide what color keychain. Okay, so we can go dark pink, um, which is not what I have on Kurumi. I have the light pink, but there's a hot pink. And there's also this lighter pink to match Kurumi. We can also do yellow, which I think would be cute. No! Yellow to match her little nose. So many choices. Joey's calling me. Hey, love. I'm almost done with my live. Can you call me when you get to the dead zone? Hello? I, I lost you. I don't know what you said, but oh. you said you're still live. Yeah, can you call me when you get through the dead zone? Sure. All right. Love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. Da, da, The dogs think he's here. They went and running. He's not here. He's barking. Don't know who he's barking at, but it's not your daddy. All right, sewing him up, sewing her up. So what else would you guys like to see as keychains? Uh, do you have a favorite Sanrio character? Would you like to see Pokemon? I'm always good at Pokemon. <laughs> would you like a different game? Let me know. I'm currently obsessed with making little keychains. And I bought a hundred of that little pack of those plastic McDonald looking keychains. <laughs> so, definitely giving Happy Meal vibes, right? That's what Bethany said. So let me know what you guys would like to see. I'll slowly do my... My goodbyes while I'm showing this. Some of your characters are... Butama, as I would say that? Butama? And cinnamon roll. I do want to do cinnamon roll. Precious. Precious things. Alright, I'm gonna do light pink just to match. And then I'm also gonna put one of these on to match. You think light pink? Perfect. Alright, I have this little like bead chain. You know those ones that you can kind of like break off? to make them smaller. So that's what I'm doing. I think I did like five. Oh my gosh, my scissors aren't cutting it. I know you can like break it. But I thought this would be faster. Okay. And then I'm gonna put it on here. What was it up? Um, also, if you're interested in a sword Kirby, you can get it until April is over on my Patreon. You can get it as a plush with a sticker for $20, or you can also get it just as a sticker. And that's patreon.com slash line around sewing. Woo. I'll also be at... Um, can close this off. Tennessee Tech Campus for Omnicon this Saturday. And these will be here. You can come and see if I got a vending machine yet or a claw machine yet. 
which I'm very tempted to get one. You can also check out my vlog though. I'm sure I'll say it in the vlog. Which will go up on Friday. Oh my gosh, I'm losing it, guys. My thread is all stuck in this keychain. This is what happens when we work too fast. And we don't have to. There's no there's no need to rush. Okay, we're gonna slow it down now. doing their character voting at the moment and cinnamon roll has been number one for years is it still looking like number one oh that's perfect timing then because i can see what the the top ones are looking like I would be down for Boulder's game. Characters? Yeah. Or just play Boulder's game. Because yeah. I'm down for both too. I just don't even know how it would make them so little and cute. All right, we're gonna call it done, but I do want your guys' opinions. Oh, 90 characters? Are there really 90 characters? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'll definitely make the most popular. All right, so here, my melody. All right, with Kurumi. Love them, adorable. But question for my melody. Do we want the ears up or do we want it kind of like this bigger plush where I sewed the ear down? My melody's number six, perfect. I'll have to check that out. Did you just Google like ranking or is it on their website? So you guys let me know. This is the last thing and I'm gonna close out or like I'm gonna say bye. But do you like the ears up? Or do you want me to, should I stitch it with the ear down? Because I wouldn't mind the keychain with the ears up, because then it kind of is like centered. So let me know what you guys think. I'm in love. This is my new obsession, is making cute matching keychains and prizes. <laughs> Keep forgetting my camera's over here. Look at him! Ah! So definitely check out, check out this Friday's vlog. I'll let you guys know what else I make into keychains because it's possibly just gonna be big keychain. Here's the little Lethal Company guy. And uh, we'll see if I get a claw machine, but it's looking likely. And just picture these guys all in, all in little Easter eggs curled up and you can get them out of a claw machine. The ear stitch down is cute. All right, perfect. Yay! Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you again. Ah, that's Joey. Thank you again for um, helping me get to 1K views and or views, 1K followers. And I can't wait to do more. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. -bye.